In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the worst and most disappointing makeup that I tried in the past year in 2022. I tried a lot of makeup this year and most of it was good, but some of it was not. So if you'd like to see my picks for the worst makeup of 2022, just keep on watching. Before we get into it, if you're new here, welcome. If you haven't subscribed to my channel already and you like this video and you like my content, I would love for you to consider subscribing. I like to focus mainly on high-end luxury and indie makeup. I like to review new products, but I also love to play with older makeup in my collection. So if all of that sounds good to you, I would love for you to subscribe. Now let's get into these very disappointing makeup products. So most of these I don't actually have to show you. There's actually only one of the products that I'm going to be talking about today that I actually have in hand to show you, but I will try to put up little pictures of the products so you can see what I'm talking about. The reason I don't have them in hand is that I didn't like them and so I returned them. So I actually have a couple of products from Charlotte Tilbury that I wanted to talk about. The first was the Matte Eyes to Mesmerize. Now this is a product that I was really excited to try I love Charlotte Tilbury's Eyes to Mesmerize cream shadows in the little pots, but those ones are all more kind of shimmery or metallic finishes. But when she announced she was bringing out matte ones, that was really exciting because I love to use cream eyeshadows as bases or for really easy, simple looks. And to have the right color of a matte cream shadow is a great type of product to have in your repertoire. Eva is here on my lap. You can see her little tail. So I had high expectations for the Matte Eyes to Mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury. And I think I only ordered one shade. I did review it on my channel. From the moment I opened the tub, I was worried that this product wasn't going to work and I was right. So the regular Eyes to Mesmerize from Charlotte Tilbury are a beautiful, creamy, kind of moussey formula. You can get a lot of movement from them, so you can blend them out, you can build them up, and you have enough time to work with them before they set down. But these matte ones were a totally different texture. They were almost hard in the pan, not like a putty, because a putty is a kind of a more lightweight feeling, but almost like a clay. The thing the texture reminded me most of was like plasticine modeling clay that I used to play with when I was a kid. Very hard, quite waxy, and it applied like that on the eyes as well. I tried warming it up with my fingers, so it was quite difficult to work with on a brush to actually pick up the product and to blend it out. And I thought maybe the warmth of my fingers would make it easier to apply. But this formula was just a complete dud for me. It did not work for me no matter how I tried to apply it. And in addition to being really difficult to apply, it looked very patchy on my lids, very dry, and it just did not work at all for me. So that was probably actually the worst product of this year for me. The other Charlotte Tilbury fail for me this year was the Beautiful Skin Foundation. Now this one is a little bit different and it's more particular to me that it was a fail because I actually liked the look of this foundation. I reviewed it as well on my channel and I loved how it looked on my skin. It was really easy to work with and I did like how it looked on my skin. It was a beautiful kind of natural dewy finish with a good amount of coverage, but you could customize it to be a little bit lighter or a little bit heavier depending on what you were going for. One of the issues with this for me was the shade range. I had the lightest shade and it was still much too dark for me. It was a shade that probably would have worked for me in the summer when I had fake tan on. But for most of the year, I'm trying to match to my true pale skin tone and even the lightest shade in this range was much too dark for me. So that was one issue. And that's an issue that I find across a lot of Charlotte Tilbury's complexion formulas. But the bigger issue for me with this formula is that it really broke me out very badly. I got a lot of very painful, deep cystic pimples from this foundation and in areas that I usually don't get breakouts. So I'm very prone to breakouts on my chin area, but it's very rare for me to get them on the rest of my face. But with this foundation, I think I got a big, huge one on my cheek, which I really have issues with that area. I think I had one on my forehead, maybe my nose. I can't quite remember, but it really broke me out in a pretty serious way. So that too made this product a fail for me. So the next product I wanted to talk about, I wasn't sure if I should include this in this video because I'm still trying to make it work. So it's not a complete fail for me, but I wanted to talk about the Salt New York Sneaky Balms. So I reviewed this product when it came out and it initially came out in 12 different shades and I bought the lightest shade at that time, which was N12. Now this shade is another one that is too dark for me for most of the year, but was actually a great shade for me in the summertime and you can see I've gone through quite a lot of it. So I do like the formula of this. 
It gives quite a light coverage, so as long as you know to expect that and you can get a good color match, I think that this is still a good product, but I can't use this shade when my skin is very pale if I'm trying to match to my neck, which is now what I try to do with my complexion products. Then a few months later, the brand brought out a lighter shade, which was great because there were a lot of people for whom N12 was not light enough, so they brought out N13, which you can see is significantly lighter than N12. And I just haven't been able to get this shade to work for me. So I find this to be quite a gray toned complexion product. These are all meant to be olive undertone shades and certain olive undertoned products actually work really well for me. The base I'm wearing today is actually the Hourglass Concealer in Birch. That's a very, very light, very neutral, kind of olivey, almost gray undertone shade but it just works really well for me. Unfortunately, with this one, I think there's an issue with the coverage level is not enough on this to cover up enough of my redness when my skin is at its palest. In combination with the undertone just being a little bit too olive, a little bit too gray for me, so that if I do build it up more where I want to cover up my redness, there's just too much of that gray undertone coming through and it makes my whole face look very gray and just not the right color. And typically if I am using lighter coverage products that are not high coverage enough to cover up redness, I can go in with a green color corrector underneath or mix a green color corrector in and that will correct the redness and I can still wear a lighter coverage base. But with this, I can't pair it with the green color corrector because it's already too green as it is, but not high enough coverage to cover the redness properly. So I just haven't been able to get this to work. I've tried probably three or four times and I've just been very unhappy with how it looked every time but I don't wanna give up on it completely. So maybe if you have any tips on how to use this or how to make this work, I would love to hear that. But so far I just haven't had any luck with this and more than really being a fail because I do like the formula and I like the product and I like the concept. It's just more of a disappointment for me because I haven't been able to get it to work for me. So I wanted to mention that in this video as well. Okay, next I have two products from Say that I wanted to talk about. I haven't tried a ton from this brand. I have their cream bronzer, which I do enjoy. It's not one of my favorites, but it's a good product. But I tried two other products from them and both of them I returned because they just really didn't work for me. One was the concealer that they brought out this year. It was called the Hydra Beam Brightening and Hydrating Under Eye Concealer. So I bought it with the awareness that it is meant for the under eyes and not necessarily all over the face. Although I think every other concealer I have has worked both under the eyes and on my face. So I was also curious to try it on the face, but was mainly testing it for under the eyes. And I just hated this concealer. I hated how it felt on my skin. To me, it felt really heavy and I have very dry skin, so I can tolerate a lot of like moisture and kind of balmy textures on my skin, but this one just felt so heavy and really greasy on my skin, even just under my eyes, but definitely when I tried it all over my face, that was a huge issue. But I also hated how it felt just under the eyes. It still had that really greasy feeling which I found quite surprising because I like to have a lot, a lot of moisture underneath my eyes because that's probably the driest area of my face. But this was just not meshing with my skin. And I got a ton of creasing and kind of separating with this under my eyes as well, which is not an issue that I find I have really with any other concealers. So I found that quite strange as well. So all that to say, this formula really did not work for me. I tried it once, maybe twice, but I returned it very quickly because I knew this was just not going to work for me. The other product I tried from Say was their Liquid Blush, which I had heard so many great things about and I eventually decided I wanted to try it out. And this one for me was not nearly as hard of a fail as the concealer was. I actually liked the texture of this. I loved how dewy it looked on the skin. It was very easy to apply. But the issue with this one for me was the color. And the color I tried was called Peachy and it's described as a light peach pink. And the pictures online make it look like a really nice kind of neutral light peach, which is a blush color that I can wear fairly easily. But when I actually tried this on, I found it to be incredibly orange looking and not in a good way. I'm not opposed to wearing orange blush if it's right for the look. I love an orange blush, 
but this was not a nice looking orange. It was kind of like when you apply a foundation shade that's not right for you and it turns orange on your skin. That was the kind of orange that it felt like to me. And I found it to be a very unflattering color and very different from what I was hoping for and what I expected based on the images that I saw online. So that was a very quick return for me as well. I have two more fails to talk about. One is the Tower 28 Tinted Moisturizer. This is a product I was eagerly anticipating. I think it released in the US before it came to Canada because it has an SPF component. So I was looking forward to trying this. When it finally came to Canada, I ordered it immediately. I actually liked the shade that I had and I liked how this applied to the skin. I had the shade Larchmont and I actually wore it in one of my videos. And it looked pretty good on camera from the distance that I was sitting from the camera. And I wore it a couple times other than that as well while I was testing it out. And I tested it out with different products underneath. And the problem that I had with this is that it separated on my skin. It always looked kind of flaky and separated and had this kind of white textural spots that it always created. I tried it with a number of different bases underneath it, so different skincare and primers. And that happened for me every time. So that was another product that just didn't work for me. I think it does work for a lot of people and they like it. It just did not work for my skin. And the last fail of 2022 that I wanted to talk about is the Westman Atelier iPods in the shade Rendezvous. Now this is a product I was quite excited about when I saw it announced. I love so many Westman Atelier products and I love the color story of these little iPods. So the iPods from Westman Atelier are a little three shadow trio. Each shade is in an individual pot and they are all magnetized to each other. So this color story rendezvous was very appealing to me. There was a deeper kind of neutral, cool brown. There was a mid-tone olive shade, which I'm always interested in greens and olive greens in particular. And then there was a lighter kind of shiny peach shade, which I was also quite excited about because I love to use peach shades, particularly on my inner corner. And I thought that one would work with the other two shadows in this little trio. But for me, the quality of these eyeshadows was really abysmal. It took so much product to build up any color on the lid. Again, I tried with brushes, I tried with fingers, nothing created the result that I was looking for. And even when I was able to create a look that I was somewhat satisfied with how it looked on my eyes, it faded almost immediately and got very patchy. It did not wear well at all. And those qualities wouldn't be acceptable to me even in very low priced eyeshadows. But to have those terrible results from such expensive eyeshadows, you get so little product and they're very expensive. That was definitely not going to work for me. So those I returned as well. So those were my worst makeup products of 2022. As I said, most of the makeup I tried this year was at least good, if not great or excellent, but there were definitely a few disappointments and they couldn't all be winners. So let me know if you had any really disappointing products that you tried this year. I would love to hear about that in the comments. Let me know if you have any other comments or questions. I always love to see those. And if you'd like to see more from me and you haven't subscribed to my channel already, I would of course love for you to do so. Thank you so much for watching. Take care and I'll see you in my next video.